we take stock of what is happening on the Ukrainian front. There are indications that the talks, peace talks are progressing in a good direction. At the same time, it's not as if fighting is getting any less intense. So this is a bit like that kabhi, nar, kabhi garam garam, kabhi sard sard kind of situation. But it's a complex situation and we'll talk about it. In the middle, we've also seen and heard what looks like a big Vladimir Putin meltdown. Vladimir Putin in real fury, lashing out. So we'll talk about that also. But before I go, to go there, let me, let me also remind you that you need to be, you should be members on our YouTube channel. Membership costs very little. Please take a paid membership to our YouTube channel and post your views on our videos, on other things, and we will all respond to you. The person to whom these are addressed or the person who features in the video, my colleagues, they will respond to you. And also there are many other benefits. And soon we'll also have uh, branded merchandise, which will be available discounted to our YouTube members. So please take our YouTube memberships. And I promise you in the past, I might have been a bit lax with my responses. Part of it might have been also because working from home makes you a little more chaotic than usual. So I will make sure that we are not, none of us is now lax on this. So please do take a membership. It's only 159 per month. So now back to the topic. Now what's happening in Ukraine? Talks are going on between Ukrainian officials and Russian officials. Many countries are mediating. The top two countries at this point who are mediating, I would say, are Israel. Israel's prime minister himself is involved. He had gone flying to Moscow, then he went to Germany. He's talking to everybody and he's getting them together. And second, a bit surprisingly, is Erdogan of Turkey. Erdogan has also been calling Putin. He's also been willing to become party to some kind of security guarantees for Ukraine going ahead. And talks are taking place. In fact, Erdogan also invited the Russian foreign minister and his Ukrainian counterpart to have a meeting in his country, in Turkey. So those talks are reaching somewhere. Now, I read many stories about this and I watch a lot of global TV and global media and it's evident that a formula of some kind of agreement is emerging. It's not as if both sides have agreed to it as yet, but there is some kind of a discussion draft on which there is wide agreement or there is more agreement than disagreement. So the story that I find the most detailed and the most reliable is in Financial Times. It's from Dada on the Beat, that is Max Seddon of FT, with a bunch of other reporters who are all well-known bylines in their areas, from their regions. And if you read this story, basically it says that there is a 15-point draft now. The key elements in that draft, number one, of course, that Russia declares ceasefire and withdraws its forces. Then we'll come into tricky areas in a moment. That means up to where does it withdraw its forces? Number two, Ukraine gives a, gives a commitment of neutrality. So neutrality, again, I have seen the buzz from the Chinese side. In fact, somebody authoritative from the Chinese side has also spoken out, saying that in neutrality like Austria's or Sweden, which is enshrined in the constitution and guaranteed by others, ideally, as in the case of Austria, that will be acceptable to Russia, which means that Ukraine will have to amend its constitution. That is what the Russians will insist on. That means they will become constitutionally a neutral country as Austria is, as Sweden is, as say Switzerland is, in some ways as Finland is. So that's what they want uh, Ukraine to be. Third, Ukraine can keep its army, but it will not allow any foreign bases. That the Ukrainian side says is not such a big problem because as such their constitution as it exists today does not allow the setting up of foreign bases on their territory. And fourth, that Russian language is also given an official or legal status because the Russians say that people who are Russian speaking, that's almost 20% of Ukraine's population, much higher percentage in the Donbass region, they should have full rights. They are currently being victimized. So Russians should be made 
an official language. That got me immediately to react by saying that, look, in India, if you wanted, just wanted your language to be accepted as official language, all you have to do is sit in dharna and protest for 21 days. Why do you have to go to war for 21 days? So this like looks like one of those face-saving things so that you can add that I got 15, I put up 15 demands, I got 13 of that, of those accepted. So I can declare victory. Similarly, there should be enough there for Ukraine to declare victory. So negotiations are going in a direction whereby both sides can go home <coughs> claiming some victory. Now we come into problematic areas. Problematic areas are if Russians withdraw, how far do they withdraw? Do they then also withdraw from the entire Don Donbass region, which were they were more or less controlling even earlier? which they have now declared as sovereign republics, that is Donetsk and Luhansk. What happens to those so-called Russian uh, anointed sovereign republics? And what happens to Crimea, which Russia had seized in 2014? Again, the buzz from the Ukrainian side is that they will be open to considering a possibility, accepting a possibility that Russians at least withdraw from every bit of territory that they have captured after their invasion on February 2014. What happened earlier can be compartmentalized. So Ukrainians would want to compartmentalize it. That means we'll discuss it later. Russians, if at all, might insist that Ukraine now accepts the sovereignty of Donetsk and Luhansk, that is the Donbass region, and also that Ukraine recognizes Russian sovereignty over Crimea. So there are still problematic areas. It's not a done deal yet. The other elements of the 15-point draft are not that import important. Now, one of the one of the other things being discussed is that look, Ukraine cannot join NATO. And Ukraine says, then what is the guarantee tomorrow that you Russians will not do it to me again? So Russians at this point seem to be seem to be open to the idea of a multinational security guarantee to Ukraine. And these could be US, UK, Turkey. That's not very different from the kind of guarantee that Austria has, although their Soviet Union was also one of the signatories. Now, there are also many people, many skeptical people who think that all Putin is doing is buying time to reorganize and regroup his army. His invasion has come to a halt. It is now, he's now walked into a stalemate. No big army likes a stalemate because stalemate means no progress, casualties, pressure on your supply lines, angry troops and at some point problems begin because also you are a much bigger power. For a much bigger power invading a much smaller power, a stalemate is defeat, particularly if a stalemate continues for long enough. So maybe Putin, if he's smart, wants to cut his losses and declare victory and get these concessions. Or maybe he's just buying time so he can bring in more firepower. And also, maybe he buys into some of the French analysis of the war that's coming out, saying that unlike the Americans and the Europeans and the British, who think that Ukrainians are fighting, fighting hard and can fight for a long time, analysis that's coming in from the French, even at official level, seems to be that, yes, the Ukrainians are fighting, but the Ukrainian fight back could collapse any time, that their armed forces could capitulate any time, particularly if their forces sort of west of Donbass region, between the Donbass region and say around Dnieper River or Dnipro River, if they get encircled, then this army could collapse. So we don't know what's going on and everybody's making these calculations. In the middle of these calculations, this video of a speech by Putin and it's just a two minute 10 second video and that has popped up and you will see it running on the screen as I talk. Now this video appeared on an official Russian channel Russia 24 and as it appeared they only released a two minute clip taking out the last 10 seconds. So some, some people have taken out those 10 seconds particularly a man called Michael Elgert and you will see his Twitter handle here. So he's taken out those 10 seconds also and added it in fact He's also given us links to both two, two minutes and the 10 second clips. If you combine them together and you read the translation, it's, it's a rant, it's an, it's an angry statement. Putin is speaking in fury, it's in Russian. So as he speaks, English subtitles run on the screen. So please watch them as I tell you more about the screen because this might tell us something about 
his state of mind and this state of mind does not seem to indicate that he's he's now looking forward to a peace or a settlement or a ceasefire and to declare victory on compromise terms and dump his maximalist terms so what is he saying first of all he's talking using words like fifth column national traitors people with slavish consciousness people who are midges makhi machar right like that termite if, if, if that is a more familiar word for you so he says who is he attacking he is attacking rich russians he is saying rich russians i don't care if they have beach houses in miami or on the french riviera i don't mind if they eat foie gras or oysters all that is fine but my problem is they are mentally located in those countries they were born in russia they were mentally located in those countries deracinated you hear that term in india also deracinated indians mekale putra kale ke aulad ab paida to yahan hue ghar yahan hai but you think like uh, westerners so he is using that in sort of a very angry and a very threatening manner and he is saying the purpose the objective of the entire west is to destroy russia and they are trying to destroy russia through fifth columnists and who are the fifth columnists it's people like these who may have been born in russia but whose wealth is located overseas which i don't mind but their mentality is also located overseas and he says surprise of surprises he says they are behaving like they belong to a higher race or a higher caste and i thought the higher caste maybe it was a mistranslation of something but when i heard carefully he is using caste sort of in a russian pronunciation and you and you you, you can slow down this video and you can also hear it so he said higher caste then he says some people are ready to sell their mother if only they were allowed to sit in the hallway of this very highest caste and then the word caste figures maybe five or six times after that he then he goes on to say they also believe in imitating that higher caste in every way yet they forget or do not understand at all if they are needed by this so called higher caste he said the so called higher caste that means the westerners they are just using them they use and throw them away they are not of they are not of such use to them he said they are expendable for this higher caste higher caste westerners they will use them to cause the highest possible damage to russia and then throw them away and then he calls for a civil confrontation by loyal russians with this fifth column and he says the only purpose they have in mind is destruction of russia they are scums they are traitors but people of russia who are true patriots understand that and he said they understand that and you know how will they how will they treat them they they'll treat it like a midge or a mosquito or an insect of any kind a fly that accidentally flew into their mouth and spit it out on the pavement and he says i'm convinced that such a natural and necessary self purification for society is needed for us to have cohesion readiness and solidarity now many people have immediately said that this sounds very dangerous so karl bildt who's a former swedish prime minister 91 to 94 now also is a great intellectual think tank leader in europe karl bildt says it look this sounds like stalin this talk of fifth column and punishment etc etc this sounds like stalin and these things don't end well so people think that he is going in that direction many others say this is sounding like the nazis because he is calling people scum he is calling people insects he's asking people to spit them out he's asking people to exterminate them that is sounding like the nazis and and as i was reading up on this i made a very interesting discovery so the discovery is something called godwin's law now godwin's law is also called godwin's rule of nazi analogies what that means is that if any online discussion goes long enough at some point the mention of the nazis hitler or a nazi analogy will come in and the, his law says that if it goes on long enough there is certainty that at some point comparisons with nazis or hitler will come in which in this case have immediately happened after after putin's speech now michael godwin he is around uh, he is a thought leader uh, a formidable thought leader check out his handle uh, you will see it on my screen he also by the way 
is the inventor and that makes me very very impressed he is also the in inventor of the internet meme and he did that in 1994 and wired magazine in 1994 acknowledged him as the in inventor of the internet meme so you know what i keep on saying that there are moments in fact there are moments every day or some moment each day when i love my job as a journalist so much and one of the reasons is that i make findings i learn new things like this godwin's law